All right, y'all. It's finally time to wrap up this WBC event report for 2024. Uh, it's now like a week after getting home. I caught COVID basically on the last day of the con um, and, you know, started feeling bad once I got home, more or less. So uh, it's been a while uh, since I've even tried to or thought about recording this this last episode. My voice is almost all the way back, so let's go. So I left you all last time having played this first Heat of Space base, but not talking about it at all, trying to save some material for this last update besides just a results recap, which I'll also have uh, after covering Saturday's goings-on. Here's my board after the end of uh, Heat 1 of Space Base. I was, uh, we play light speed variant, five player, I was able to have the one income sector six card in my opening hand, which was excellent. Also in the market was the um, three dollars slash one point sector six card that costs eight. Uh, this combination means that if everyone else spends a lot of money in light speed and you only buy this sector six card with red income, uh, you are guaranteed to be able to buy uh, this sector six card immediately and flip up the income uh by turn by round one and everyone else goes um while you have this flipped already so that's what i did i bought the income card for sector six as my only light speed card uh flipped it up with my first turn of the game and let that roll on for the rest of the game i was a bit fortunate in this one six is rolled fairly frequently early on and in the mid game and in the late game so i got plenty of income for the whole game which is a really nice place to be in space base i think i was buying these colony cards on turn five and six or something like that which is pretty early um so had a pretty smooth game here big income on sector six is one of the more reliable strats not my favorite but it was definitely the best available and overall good so i was happy to run it uh here's the results of that game i won with 51 i think it was maybe eight turns oh we can check actually how many cards did i buy so i only bought one in light speed which flipped this one seven eight nine okay so it probably went nine rounds uh i think i ended round eight with like 38 or 39 points unfortunately i only had like one point on the sixes so i did have to depend extra on the colony cards it looks like i bought 27 points on the colony cards here yeah uh and leslie had a really strong game on some high numbers and bumpers if i recall so she almost caught up at the end there but very happy to get a win in heat one of space space the the system of space space based on last year um i knew that i would need one win and some like third or fourth place even in the other heat out of five to advance to the semi-final pretty reliably so getting that heat win here very strong result and puts a lot of the pressure off or takes a lot of the pressure off for heat two so success there Heat 2 of Space Base, this is my final board. Uh, in this heat, the table wanted to be flipping the colony cards instead of uh, having them face up. That's fine with me. I'll do whatever the table really wants in that regard. This game, I was able to start with the Sector 2 by a card card with, uh, in my opening light speed pack, which is also a really nice find. Very strong. Unfortunately, the level 1 market uh, to start the game didn't have any Sector 2 cards. So it took me a while to get this one flipped. As you can see, I flipped it with a points card in level two. So that took two or three orbits to, to get flipped, if I recall. Also, we didn't get a lot of twos rolled. There were a lot of nines and tens. And if you know how two dice work, you'll also note that there are no twos possible on any die, individual die, when nines and tens are the sums that are being rolled. So... Even though this was a five-player game with four opponent rolls in between and just me wanting any individual die to be a two, there were still a couple orbits where no single two got rolled, meaning I didn't get to proc this card a couple times. And that's not great when it's the, uh, the number one card in your strategy. So 
despite that, I had a solid enough game. Yeah, I scored 28 points, and no one else had uh, a really strong game either besides Sunny. Sunny had a lot of nines. You can see Sunny's board right here with a bunch of the nines stack covered. Uh, Sunny definitely profited a bunch off of these nines. Money-wise, bought a few really good colonies, if I recall, and won this one pretty handily with 41 points. And I would guess it was eight rounds, but I'm not sure. Uh, regardless, second place is totally enough with my first place in Heat 1 of Space Space to make the semifinal, so to the semifinals I go. Great. On track to repeat. It's my sixth semifinal of the week, which is great. It's, uh, or I definitely hadn't won any of them so far, so I'm hoping that for once this week my luck can turn around in a semifinal and I can make a final for the first time this week. Uh... We get seeded for the semifinals all randomly. I don't get seeded with any of my co-finalists from last year. I think all of them might have made the semifinals again this year. But I do avoid them in the semis this year, so that's good. Um, I don't avoid Chad Martin, who has had an insane week to this point. Uh, possibly, like, five final tables so far for Chad and possibly a sixth if he wins the Space Base Semi here, with a couple of wins, too, in those finals. Uh, Chad and Andrew Martin both had amazing weeks. Anyway, um, it's the Space Base Semi-Final now. I don't have any pictures, so I'm just going to leave this one up for lack of other things to do. Uh, we play with a slightly incorrect rule for the light speed start because one of the players was complaining very loudly uh, to the GM and the rule book isn't super duper clear. I think it's clear enough that the market should be face up when people are making their light speed purchases, but uh, this player was complaining very loudly. Um, and I don't blame the GM at all for this, but we played with the market face down during light speed purchases in the semifinal. So I had to take a bit of a risk with my semifinal light speed hand. I don't have a clear great card like I did in my heats with the uh, heat one having the income sector six, heat two having buy a card sector two. Those are both very clear light speed buys and I didn't have those this game. So I take a risk. I only buy a single level one card, leaving me with 13 bucks to start uh, round one. It also means I'm pretty guaranteed to be the start player, especially because it's even more risky than usual to not spend all your money in light speed when the market's face down. But I was super uninspired by my cards and went for uh, the alternative play. I do get more or less rewarded because the level 3 zone, which I'm very interested in when I save all this money, uh, there's the points card for Sector 5, which is pretty darn good. However, there's no other Sector 5 cards in the market, so I have no idea how long it would take to flip that points card, making it pretty risky. The play that... Um, there's also a play for the Sector 9, uh, flip this card, swap this card with anything once you get it charged. Um, and that card can be pretty insane. Um, I consider it, there are some opponents with some Sector 9 cards, and there's one level 1 Sector 9 card in the market, and I think I deemed it a little too risky that I wouldn't be able to get that one flipped for a long time either. The card that I can flip is the income card for Sector 7, uh, which when you flip it gives you 3 bucks and 2 income anytime your opponents roll a 7. So not only is that one in level 3 to start the game, but also there are two level 1 Sector 7 cards. I don't think more than one opponent had a Sector 7 card uh, to start the game on their light speed purchases, so I think it's very, very likely that I can buy the income card for Sector 7 in round 1 and flip it in round 2. So with this strategy, I'm hoping from rounds like 2 through 4 that my opponents on their 8 to 12 rolls, their first 8 to 12 opponent rolls, combine for like two sevens. That's the EV or slightly above EV that I'm hoping for. If that happens, I have a really strong chance to snowball my game very hard and have a good chance at winning. So of course I'm tracking my opponent's sevens throughout the game, 
They actually roll one in round one when it's not super helpful to me. Uh, the one roll I have to get three income from a seven, I don't roll a seven. And rounds two through seven with uh, 24 opponent rolls in those rounds, there's one seven. Uh, the expected value is four, and timing does matter. You definitely want them earlier instead of later, and the one seven by my opponents was in round five. So I set myself up to have really strong winning chances if I get lucky and never win if I get unlucky, but that's kind of what you have to do in space space a lot of the time without a better strategy. Um, excuse me while I cough. And this game I just got unlucky. Um, and it happens. I get space-based, as uh, Rainier would say. But that means I lose my sixth semifinal of the week. I make no final tables, which is the worst overall result from a WBC I've had in uh, my four years of attending. So that was unfortunate. Um, I think I wallow a bit. I don't play much open gaming uh, until Facts in 5 at 9 p.m. In past years, I've played events that have playoff rounds during Facts in 5, but I've never liked how that felt. Like, I've missed an entire Facts in 5 to um, end up taking third place in Carcassonne. Um, and I've missed half of Facts in 5 to try to make the Carcassonne finals. Um, sorry, I'm going to pick this back up in a sec. Okay, <laughs> fixed up the coughing hopefully, and uh, on the results summary page now. Anyway, Facts and Five is such a fun event. Uh, John Corrado does such an amazing job with it every year that it always feels bad to miss it, even if I'm playing playoffs for Carcassonne or something else. So anyway, as I was saying, um, I choose not to play any events with playoffs during Facts and Five anymore. Um, it's just a lot of fun to sit with friends, have a couple drinks, and enjoy the trivia show for uh, whatever you want to make of it. Personally, I am a lot more specialized in a few categories like uh, science and geography and math um, when it comes to trivia, and I'm pretty awful in pop culture type categories, so when I get the categories I'm into, I spend most of the five minute rounds on those categories, so I'm never trying to score as much as I can necessarily. I'm really trying to maximize my own enjoyment during Facts in Five. Um, but it was a very nice Facts in Five this year, as always. Uh, again, huge credit to John and his team for running a show that I think we're filling the ballroom now with Facts in Five, so it's probably like 350 or 400 people for this Saturday night event. Uh, that concludes the events of my WBC. Uh, on Sunday, I have a very early ride into Pittsburgh. Even though my flight's not for about another 24 hours, it ended up being a lot cheaper for me to take a Monday morning flight out of Pittsburgh and spend a, spend a night at an airport hotel. Shout out, really random shout out to the Holiday Inn Express Pittsburgh Airport because not only were they one of the cheapest options, but they also had a free airport shuttle, free breakfast. And the room was like nothing to complain about at all. It was totally nice, uh, what I would expect, and maybe a bit more than that. Uh, so with that said, you know, chances are I'll be looking into these like delayed flights home uh, a little harder every year because that was definitely a fine experience. Uh, on, sat on Sunday, uh, with my, you know, 24-ish hours in Pittsburgh, I actually got to see the National Aviary this year. Um, it was something I meant to see last year, but it was closed for a private event on the one uh, extra day I had in Pittsburgh. That uh, last year it was on my way in where I had some extra time, uh, but it was closed last year. Um, and not this year on my way out, so I did get to see that. Uh, had a really nice couple hours there, it was a lot of fun. Uh, seeing some exotic birds and some common ones. Um, yeah, it was really great. So. Um, Monday morning I fly out, and that is my WBC experience this year. So here's like the list of all the things I played competitively. I don't have a list of anything. I did open gaming this year. I did track that last year for the recap video that never came out because it, I was muted the whole time. 
that that's a really fun story. Um, <clears throat> the takeaways I got from making this list is that this is what my feelings are. This is what I'm mentally focused on. Is my six semifinals, which is like impressive, but zero wins, and that means I played in zero finals this year. Also, the three laurels I got this year, which are from Can't Stop. I mean, that's... The, the optimistic side of that is Can't Stop laurels are hard to come by. They're really special. I'll be a Can't Stop laurelist forever. That's awesome. Only three laurels is my lowest total from any WBC year out of my four. Makes sense, because it's also the only time I've never made a final in my four years at WBC. And that's pretty disheartening. Um, from a pessimistic point of view. Making this list made me realize I went 4-0 in my quarterfinals. Uh, out of the six semifinals that I made, five of them had quarterfinal rounds. I got a bye through the Cascadia quarterfinal, which was Friday morning, um, and I won four other quarterfinal rounds. So to make six semifinals at all, I think I need to be prouder of that as a result. Uh, so seven wonders quarter I won, can't stop quarterfinal I won, Wingspan, Terraforming Mars quarterfinal I won those as well. Um, so I, in retrospect, I do have more to be proud of here. Uh, the heat results are fairly good. Um, half of my heats I won. Um, and this is either at or above my expectation for heats as well. So despite some playoff rounds not going very well, making this list made me um, happier with how my WBC went. Um, hoping for better results in future years, though. Um, the 4-0 in quarterfinals is maybe not so sustainable, but 0% of my semifinals is also not sustainable in the better direction. The, my list of games this year is also a little surprising. Um, going into the week, I didn't plan on playing Cascadia at all, but day one, I'm 2-0 in the heats and I make the semi for that. I didn't plan on playing Mars at all due to schedule conflicts, but because of how I didn't advance in St. Pete due to a bit of bad luck and a little bad play, uh, I ended up having time for Mars, making the quarterfinal and semifinal for that. Um, the Azul Heats I didn't really plan on playing either. Uh, Stone Age I played as filler. I'm glad I got to play Galaxy Trucker because it's a lot of fun even though I'm terrible at it, so um, I did get a little better at it uh, through that heat. Um, and yeah, just not making a final is kind of disappointing. I did make some decisions to skip heats when I could have uh, played an advancement round effectively. Like, I skipped Agricola Heat 3 to play 7 Wonders, because that was the only 7 Wonders heat I could possibly make. I think I'm okay with that decision in retrospect. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> this St. Petersburg Heat 3 I played instead of the Azul quarterfinals. With two Azul wins, that that puts you into the quarterfinals, but I was like, ah, I don't have a chance at uh, winning Azul. I'm not good enough. I think I regret this. Um, I should have played the Azul quarterfinals and accepted that um, I shouldn't play St. Pete. And I think in retrospect, the reason is St. Pete would also have a quarterfinal round and there is enough variance in it. I think I overestimated my St. Pete skills this week. Um, and I mean, this heat, I played very well, but I got outplayed. Happens. Um, football strategy is something I'm very excited about for next year. Looking forward to uh, building out this spreadsheet a little harder and uh, improving that. Not gonna, not gonna show my spreadsheet though. That's for uh, select people's in-person eyes only. <laughs> Gotta keep that to myself. Um, but yeah, overall a very fun week. Hit some extra travel goals. On my way in, I spent a half day in DC, went to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, walked around the Capitol a bit, uh, through the National Mall, uh, saw the Capitol building, Library of Congress, Supreme Court, um, and I hadn't been to DC in over 20 years since I was very young, so that was really cool to get to see DC again. Um, I went to DC in the first place because a friend was driving through on their way to WBC and offered to pick me up, 
and on our drive through, we got to step foot in West Virginia for a couple minutes. And West Virginia is my 41st state out of 50. I hadn't been before. I figured at some, of, at one of these years, I'd be able to hit up West Virginia going in or out of WVC. This year ended up being it. So now 41 out of 50 states. And of course, as I said, the aviary on Sunday. So I did hit multiple travel goals in addition to having this awesome week at WBC. Um, had so much fun during the week despite the poor semifinal results. Uh, tons of old friends I got to catch up and hang out and game with, which was amazing. Made some new friends as well, which was great. Um, just an incredible week. Getting sick at the back end of it isn't super fun, and I think that's both the last two years of WBC that I've gotten sick um, coming home which is a bummer. Uh, it is a bit of a super spreader event. And, you know, it's not a bit of a super spreader event. It's a total super spreader event. But a lot of the cons um, these days are. And that's just life, I guess. I'll have to do a bit more introspection on how I feel about it. For now, I think I'm going to keep going to cons. Uh, but there's definitely second thoughts in there. Um, I haven't fully gone away from my... Uh, extreme anti-COVID stance that I had for a lot of the pandemic. So that's my WBC recap. Hope you enjoyed watching these. Thank you for watching these if you watched through all of them. Uh, back to the Agricola content on YouTube uh, starting next week. Uh, but yeah, this event is a really important one in my year, so that's, that's why I spent a couple weeks of video slots on it. Uh, and yeah, thanks again. Bye.